Imagine a U.S. Air Force that never built the B-52 bomber. Since 1955, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress has flown at the front lines of America's national defense. Initially intended to deliver strategic nuclear weapons against the Soviet Union, the B-52 has kept that mission long after the USSR itself ceased to exist. Over the years, it has been assigned to other missions, including conventional strategic bombing against Vietnam, anti-shipping missions against Soviet naval forces, conventional interdiction and attrition against deployed Iraqi forces, and a multitude of different tasks during the wars on terror. Current projections have the B-52 outliving the B-1B, the B-2, and nearly every human who was alive during its first flight, with final retirement not coming until after 2050. But what if the buff had not survived the procurement battles that embroiled the Air Force and the rest of the U.S. defense establishment in the 1940s? How would the Air Force and the broader U.S. defense establishment have filled the hole vacated by the B-52? The months and years following the end of World War II saw a bewildering array of different bomber designs. The U.S. Army Air Force, soon to be the U.S. Air Force or USAF, had put advanced design work on hold until the end of the war in order to concentrate on the B-29. The introduction of jet propulsion and of nuclear weapons transformed the procurement agenda and left the piston-engine Convair B-36 Peacemaker as the only viable transcontinental strategic bomber. But the B-36, which saw initial development in the early 1940s as an anti-German weapon, was clearly insufficient to the demands of the jet age. Thus, new design work ensued even as the USAF went to bat for the Peacemaker. The earliest versions of what would become the B-52 hit paper in late 1945. The cancellation of the B-52 would have left the USAF in a dire position. The B-36 fleet had been obsolete before the first aircraft left the factory, elaborate fixes such as attaching short-range fighters to the bomber's wings notwithstanding. The Soviet interceptor fleet would have devoured the peacemaker alive, one reason why Curtis Lemme had declined to deploy the bomber over Korea. The USAF did possess medium bombers, including the Boeing B-47 Stratojet and the Boeing B-50, an update of the B-29. Both of these had limited range and limited payloads, however, necessitating the use of foreign bases or in-flight refueling in order to reach targets in the USSR. The Convair B-58 would enter service in 1960, but was not generally regarded as satisfactory. All told, a return to medium bombers after the Peacemaker would have been viewed as a substantial setback for USAF's bomber force. The B-52 survived where other bombers failed because it could continue to fulfill a very special set of roles in the missile age, including long-range low-altitude penetration strategic bomber, heavy conventional bomber, and more generally flexible large long-range weapons carrying platform. None of the replacements of the B-52 would have performed these duties nearly as adequately. This would have negatively affected U.S. warfighting in Vietnam and in the First Gulf War, although probably not to a decisive extent. It is difficult to conceive of a world in which the United States had never acquired the B-52. The decision would have had ripple effects across the Air Force and the Department of Defense, with a not inconsequential impact on the Vietnam War. Indeed, the Air Force today would look very different if it could not rely on the B-52 as both a conventional and a nuclear bomber. The B-70 Valkyrie might well still be in service, the B-1B Lancer might never have been built, and it's not completely impossible that the B-60 would have survived to the present day in some form.